Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and today we're taking a look at the best knife from every brand. Let's check them out. All right, so obviously I'm not talking about every single brand out there, um, but we are going to take a look at, uh, at some of the biggest brands out there today. Kind of pick one knife uh, from their lineup. That's the best, a little bit uh, of what's the most iconic combined with level of performance combined with some signature elements from the, br the brand or some important parts from the brand's story. You're going to find all of that distilled into the single knife model from each of these brands. And if there's one of these brands that you haven't bought a knife from before and you're looking to get into them, these would be a perfect place to start. Now I didn't rank these in any sort of like hierarchy of best to worst or you know, anything like that. We're just going to go through these things alphabetically and we're going to start with Benchmade and the 940 Osborne. This one was kind of a toss up in the Benchmade lineup between the Osborne and the Griptilian models. Uh, certainly both of them extremely popular, but the Osborne being a bit more of a flagship type of design definitely got the win here. This particular version coming in uh, just over 190 right now. Now this particular design has been around for a little bit now, and it goes to show just how kind of iconic the design has been and how, you know, inimitable the design has been that in that time, there's still nothing out there that really looks like a 940. Like it's unmistakably this Warren Osborne design right here. This version comes with an S30V blade, but there are upgraded models available with some S90s and stuff like that. But for the, uh, for the best one, we got to go with the classic with the green anodized aluminum handles with that ridged purple backspacer there on the back. Those handles are aluminum, some nice sculpting, as you can see, probably pretty advanced for the time when it was originally introduced and still nice to look at today. We've got a crossbar lock, which is Benchmade's axis lock, their signature lock style, allows you to do some cool things like that, flicking the blade open and close, give it a little more uh, wrist action than that last one I did, but it lets you get open that uh, reverse tanto blade shape, although there's a, a straight clip point available, nice narrow needle point, needle point as well. But just a classic, I guess, you know, at this point, you really can say it's a classic looking blade because it's it's so well established at this point. Solid working knife in a nice gentlemanly package, too. So it's a really nice blend between the blue collar and the white collar worlds. All right, next up, we're going to go to Boker with their Lucas Burnley designed Quaken. And this is one of the Boker Plus lineup of knives. So that means it's one of their imported knives. Well, I guess pretty much all Bokers, uh, with very few exceptions, are imported to us here. Uh, but Boker is a German company, but the Boker Plus line is produced in China. And I think the Quaken here was probably the first thing that really made people kind of sit up and take notice of their, their more budget-oriented offerings with this solid design right here. Now, there's a bunch of different versions of this at this point with different handle materials, uh, some flat, some like this with a little more contour to it. Uh, this particular one comes in at about 168 right now with a VG10 blade steel and a ball bearing pivot based flipper. But again, there's some automatic versions as well as different steels, bunch of different variants because this has been such a successful line. Blade itself on this one's about three and a half inches. We've got a hollow grind, some nice horizontal and vertical grain on the blade itself. It has a nice sort of custom level touch and kind of folded up. Whole blade really disappears into the handle, but for the flipper tab there on the back, got a single position pocket clip there. And that flipping action comes out quite nicely. Now the handle, of course, draws inspiration from the classic Japanese style of blade where the Quaken originates from. And you've got that kind of upswept, not an Americanized Tanto in this case, but a little bit of the echoes of the class, classic, I almost said classic Tanto, the classic Tanto shape in the blade here. You get a little bit of kind of that trailing point uh, architecture and a lot of belly to take advantage of here. They've even made some, uh, some fixed blade steak knife versions of this, this design because it would work really well for that sort of thing. You're engaging all of that belly as you would if you're cutting through a steak on a plate. Just a really cool design, definitely worth a look. Um, also check out Boker's Urban Trapper. That, that very nearly uh, took the spot, I think, from the Quaken, but in the end, this is the guy. All right, next up, we're coming to Buck Knives, and there's probably nothing more iconic and more classic in their lineup than the 110. I think the coolest version has got to be the automatic version. What I like about this is 
It's kind of a blend of the old school and the new. On the old school side, you've got the classic brass bolstered versions with the wood handles. Uh, on the new school version, you've got really nice Micarta versions that are a bit slimmer with S30V steel. This guy kind of bridges the gap between those two. You've got black G10 in this case and a nickel silver bolster. And again, an S30V blade steel on this guy as well. Now it's still a classic lockback, disengaged just like the original 110, but you've got that push button shield here on the front that works to fire the blade and it fires the blade quite nicely. I think the only thing wrong with this knife, and I wouldn't even say it's actually wrong, is I'm so used to closing, closing a push button automatic knife by pushing the button to unlock. I find myself doing that, I push the button and try to move the blade fairly often, but you, you do actually have to use the lock back there, but that's okay just gives you a different level of appreciation or a different, different type of appreciation for this particular design. One of the things, the classic versions of the 110, which this shares the, uh, the same dimensions with, uh, has always been good at is a nice filling grip, very neutral in shape. So a lot of different hand sizes will work with it. Uh, only downside for, uh, for modern folks is carrying this knife. This is not a very pocket friendly knife. It does come with a leather sheath, but if you'd rather have a pocket friendly 110, Check out that Slim Pro that I showed you just a second ago. All right, next up is Cold Steel with their Andrew Demko designed AD10 coming in about 192 right now. Now this particular design makes the list today because there's a few things about it that are just superlative. For one thing, you've got Cold Steel's triad lock, which looks like a lock back here from the side, but they've added a stop pin and changed some things up underneath the hood, so to speak, with some different geometries, so that this particular, we'll call it an iteration of a lockback, is stronger than most lockbacks. In fact, it's stronger, or Cold Steel claims it's the strongest locking mechanism on the market, or at least they did at some point. But in addition to that, the way it's gonna wear in, it's not gonna get loose over time either. So in the end, a very strong and very reliable locking mechanism. On top of that, you've also got an extremely comfortable handle. They're G10, bit of a radius going on, and they're sculpted just right. And when we're talking about comfort in the hand, that's usually something that has to take a little bit of a back seat when we're talking about folding knives, whereas uh, certain fixed blades can don't have to deal with the constraints of the mechanism and the folding and the way it's gonna sit in your pocket. So to see that on a nice production folder like this, I'm always appreciative of. Now you do have a pocket clip on this one, despite it being a nice large knife. Uh, there's not, uh, it's not a reversible pocket clip, but they do have a second pocket clip you can actually use on the reverse side. So it works well for lefties or righties, likewise with the lock and those dual thumb studs there. Uh, but me personally, I almost wanna run this without the pocket clip on it for even a higher degree of comfort. Not that it really gets in the way, I just really wanna feel those nice G10 scales on this knife. On top of that, we've got a nice blade, about three and a half inches of S35 VN, decently thick, would make a great camping folder. Uh, if you wanted uh, a survival knife in a folding format, although I do recommend a fixed blade first and foremost, this certainly would not be a bad choice. All right, next brand we come to uh, is actually a couple of things combined. Uh, we're taking Civivi, which is you know the budget counterpart to the higher end We Knife Company, and just for, for keeping this video to a more manageable length, when we come to companies like that, we're gonna kind of combine them in two, which makes it a little harder actually to pick just one knife. But in this case, I really think it's gotta be the Civivi Pintail. This is actually one of their latest designs to have been released. They come in about 83 bucks right now. And a lot of folks would probably have thought I would have picked the Elementum from Civivi's lineup. But for one thing, I think the pintail has a little bit better of a design, certainly a little bit nicer to look at as well. And it's a nice bridge between the lower end of Civivi's lineup and the, uh, the entry level stuff in the higher end Wii lineup because you've got an S35 VN blade steel here for just over 80 bucks. Certainly a lot of performance for your dollar and it's sized just right for most people's EDC these days. Blade shape, nice drop point and just under three inches. So it's gonna blend in and, and be capable of being carried in a lot of different places. A few different handle materials as is kind of Civivi's thing. They like to, uh, to spit out a bunch of different versions so everyone's got something cool to look at. I really like the Micarta versions though. Has a nice rustic look, looks nice and broken in without looking kind of tattered up, certainly right out of the box. We've also got the liner lock, deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible on this knife and 
Also, in addition to having a nice higher end steel like S35 VN, you've also got ball bearings in the pivot, which used to be a much more premium thing. And you're gonna get some really good action, whether from the flipper or the thumb studs, thanks to the construction you see here. All right, next up, we're combining another two uh, set of budget and more premium brands, CJRB and Artisan Cutlery. And funnily enough, I mean, they, they make things in a wide range of prices, up to a few hundred dollars for some of their premium stuff. But I think the best knife they make is actually, I think their least expensive locking knife, the CJRB Rhea. Starting at just 32 bucks, you get a really nicely designed folder here. It has a nice classic look, but it's not old fashioned looking at the same time, which is kind of cool. It's a neat trick to pull off. Those also come with a Sandvik 12C27 blade steel. Really good stuff, especially for that price. Holds an edge really well, very easy to maintain, nice fine grain structure overall. Or on some of the slightly more expensive versions like this Knife Center exclusive, we've got an RPM 9 steel, which is a new powdered steel that Artisan and CJRB came up with together, designed to give you a powdered steel tailored to a budget line of knives. So even though I say this is more expensive, this particular version right here with these orange and black kind of coral patterned G10 scales is just 55 bucks still. So not only are you getting some good performance out of all these blades, the prices are really quite nice. You can even get them with a deep carry pocket clip or a milled titanium pocket clip, depending on which version you get. Liner lock here as well. But the thing that really makes this knife special beyond just the things on paper that you can point to is the action. Again, we've got ball bearings in the pivot. We've got a right side only thumb stud in this case, but it's at just the right spot so that when you hit it and push that blade out, it pops open almost like there's a spring behind it. It really is a fantastic opening knife and just a really nice, easy to carry and very subtle design. All right, next up, we're coming to CRKT and I kind of wanted it to be any knife but the one I'm gonna show you, not because it's not a great knife and it's not deserving of earning the spot on the list, but I just happen to have shown it a lot in a few recent videos, but there's probably no denying that the CEO flipper probably sits at the top of the heap for CRKT right now. Now the flipper version kind of spins off of the popularity of the previous thumb stud version, which actually like that CGRB had some pretty fantastic thumb stud action. And they've managed to, I think, make it even better while keeping the price the same as the original. You've got OS 8 steel here, nice pedigree with that steel. The grinds feel a bit more precise and this is a better knife from an ambidextrous standpoint as well. Whereas the original had a thumb stud similar to that CJRB, the flipper is easy to access with either hand. Likewise, deep carry pocket clip mounted from the tail that is reversible, so either side can work that quite well. And even though a liner lock is right hand biased, you still can work it with a left hand if you know what you're doing. And it's still the same great CEO we know and love in that just a pencil thin profile, takes up virtually no room in the pocket. Blade completely disappears again, except for that flipper tab right there. Looks nice and subtle from outside the pocket. People will probably think you just have a fancy pen. Maybe actually carry a fancier pen in case they ask to borrow it. You can actually hand them one. And the action on these is really good. It's a little bit different than some flippers out there, I will say, just because we have had some people commenting about this. It's a little bit more of a push rather than a pull on the flipper tab. I never really had a problem with it, but for those uh, folks out there, once you get used to it, the action is right on. IKBS ball bearings in the pivot, $40 price point on this. Very easy to see why this has been such a success. All right, next up, we come to Gerber. And while there's certainly an argument to be made for the fastball series of knives, I think Gerber's best folding knife has actually been around a little bit longer than the fastballs and that is the 06 Auto, particularly this 10th anniversary edition, which is still being made and comes in about 180 right now. now these things are made in America, and the thing that makes these kind of what they are is they are just solid as can be. They've never really been considered the fastest automatics in the world. You can see that there just from the push, but they're reliable, and again, the word solid comes to mind. This is just a for, a, for an automatic knife especially, this is a hard use folder designed for our military, in fact. Blade here is S30V. It's got a nice stone washed finish. 
a little bit of a more stout flat grind on this as opposed to a fuller flat grind. Again, going for a, a mixture of strength and cutting capabilities there. And the handles here are a green anodized aluminum. We've got full liners that have been skeletonized or drilled out in a few places to reduce a little bit of weight, but they help support that protruding pommel there at the back. As soon as you pick this knife up, there is just a feeling of rigidity and strength that you don't get from a lot of folders. You certainly get it from the AD10 we saw earlier, but that's not an automatic, so it's even slower to open than this guy. Now, of course, not everyone can carry an automatic out there, and you should definitely check out that fastball in that case. Definitely sort of a game changer in Gerber's lineup and definitely shows uh, they're trying to pay a bit more attention to some of the enthusiast base of the knife world out there. But in any case, I still think this knife is even better. All right, next up, we're coming to Hogue. And this is another one, kind of like that, uh, that Boker from earlier where it came down to two. I very nearly almost put the Hogue Deca in there, which I think is a phenomenal knife. But in this case, I actually went with the X1 Micro Flip. I like both of these knives very much. Uh, both of them, like all Hogues right now, made in the USA. But I think the X1 Micro Flip kind of signaled a little bit of a turning point in Hogue's uh, evolution, shall we say, where they, uh, they started to focus on some slightly smaller designs, slightly more EDC friendly, shall we say, with some really excellent blade materials. We've got CPM 154 on this particular knife, a bunch of different versions of this. You can get a drop point or a Warncliffe, a few different blade colors and finish handle finishes. Uh, this particular one coming in about 136 right now. The Warncliffe shape, definitely very aggressive, whether for a small self-defense type scenario, but even more than that, just a great utility knife shape. Two and three quarter inches long, hollow grind, nice smooth coating on this particular one. The handles here are aluminum. You've got a FRN backspacer on this particular model, reversible pocket clip as well, and a push button mechanism. Push buttons, of course, have been extremely popular these last couple of years. This one's not quite a drop shut push button, but they've always had some really phenomenal action just rockets out. There's a nice sound quality to it when it kind of tings into place. I've always been a really big fan. And if you are worried about a button lock becoming disengaged when you're really gripping a knife, which admittedly on a smaller design like this, which is only sort of a three and a half finger grip for my slightly larger than average hands, that can be a little bit more of a concern, but they give you a secondary safety there where you can lock that button down and really go to town without having to worry about it. But whether you go with this, one of the other blade styles, or you go with that Deca, you really can't go wrong with a Hogue knife. All right, next up, that brings us to K-Bar, who definitely are more known for their fixed blade lineup, but they do make some folders as well, including the Bob Dozier Folding Hunter. Bunch of different versions out there at this point. Not the, not the latest and greatest in terms of like whiz bang technology or design or anything like that, but this is definitely one that has stood the test of time thanks to its very neutral design that's gonna work really well for just about anyone, a nice light weight, and a really affordable price. Uh, the full size three inch version here starts at about 22 bucks with an OS 8 blade, or you can get this D2 version for just 32 bucks as well, all while weighing in at a mere just over two ounces in your pocket. So very easy to carry very easy handle shape for all kinds of different handle sizes. As you can see, plenty of grip from the injection molded material there. It's got a reversible pocket clip and a reversible thumb stud as well. So it works great for just about anyone. Blade length just under three inches. Kind of shares a lot with that Civivi Pintail from earlier, just from a, you know, a product of an earlier time in a way, but still exceptionally useful today. Now I happen to really like the coloration they did on the D2 version. I think the blue is really nice. It's not too vibrant, not too kind of weak at the same time. It's a good neutral blue color without being, you know, another neutral gray or neutral black knife. And then you've got that flat dark earth coating, nice and smooth hollow grind on the blade as well. So it's not really gonna impact cutting too much, but there's a bunch of different colors in this range as well. You can get some brighter colors. You can certainly get blacks. You can get stone wash blade finishes, black finishes really a bunch to choose from, really a lot to love. All right, next up is the, the last set of brands we're gonna combine. Uh, you've got Kershaw and Zero Tolerance on the uh, lower end and higher end respectively. And narrowing it down to one, I've gotta give it to the, uh, the budget brand again for one of their higher end options, the bare knuckle folder. 
I'm holding one of the more expensive versions of this, um, but it still only comes in about 120 bucks and it has some upgraded materials. But the standard version uh, starts at about 77 bucks right now. And even that version I think is fantastic. You've got aluminum handles and 12C, or sorry, 14C28 and Sandvik steel on that particular one. This version right here upgraded with a flat dark earth aluminum anodization and a coated 20CV blade steel. And at the $120 price mark, this is one of the least expensive uh, versions out there of any knife that you can get such a premium blade steel like this. Uh, in fact, I think the only ones that are less expensive are a couple other Kershaws. But this particular design, I still think takes it because one, it's just a fantastic looking design, but it's still got a very utility driven blade shape and handle uh, kind of handle position. It also has their signature patented actually sub frame lock, where you essentially have the full lock bar from a frame lock, but anchored to some other handle material, in this case, aluminum. That way you can you know, use that lighter weight material in this case, because they're using stainless steel for the lock bar. And you also get the aesthetics of that material on the backside, but you still have a nice full contact patch locking up with the blade. Some other nice details here, deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible and KVT ball bearings in the pivot. Now, some of these are a little bit stiff out of the box. They might take a little bit of breaking in, not all of them, but once they are ready to go, the action on these is just about as good as it gets at any price point. And for that reason, especially when you can get, when you can get it for less than 80 bucks, definitely takes the spot on this list. All right, next up we come to Kaiser. And although I was real tempted to put the sheepdog on this list, I had to give it to the Gemini for a very simple reason. I think uh, Kaiser really kind of kicked the door down in the US market for other companies like Artisan Cutlery and uh, Wee Knife Company that we talked about a little bit earlier when it comes to a more premium Chinese made knife. Some folks out there I know won't appreciate that, but the fact of the matter is this particular knife leading the charge, Kaiser really changed the landscape of the knife industry. And it's really easy to see why, especially with the amount of quality you could get for the price. Now this particular one is actually one of the more expensive versions. Uh, actually, it's one of the only smaller sub three inch versions right now. This one comes in at about 290 with a Dama steel blade. But even the original with an S35 VN blade had a nicely contoured titanium handle just like this one, ball bearings in the pivot, milled pocket clip, and importantly, world class levels of fit and finish truly like there was nothing to really actually complain about when it came to that knife. The action is quite good. The shape of this knife, another excellent EDC blade shape. And you've also got uh, a wide range of versions price wise on this as well. Unlike the uh, the Civivi and we kind of breakdown, Kaiser's more budget oriented stuff actually shares the Kaiser name, they'll just call it a Kaiser Vanguard instead. And actually, I've got the full size version of the Gemini from the Vanguard line here at the bottom. Uh, somewhere just under 80 bucks for this and you've got black linen micarta n 690 steel a little bit longer as you can see there are the two different sizes right now. But just superlative action superlative design and really great fit and finish no matter which version you pick. All right, next up we come to SOG and I had to give it to their Terminus XR. Now there's a range of these starting with this version right here coming in about 55 bucks all the way up to about 140 bucks right now, depending on the, the handle materials and blade style you, or blade material you choose. But when you take them all together, I really think uh, the entry point in this lineup is probably the, uh, the best one of them. You know, some people might not appreciate that because you can get S35 VN steel and a G10 carbon fiber handled version for just over $80. Don't get me wrong, that is a great deal. But at $55, if you've been looking to get into a crossbar locking knife like their XR lock here, like the Axis lock from Benchmade there, this is kind of the uh, right now, I think the minimum point of entry for something you don't have to apologize for any details. This is a phenomenal little design three inch blade D2 stonewash steel in this case, that crossbar lock, like I mentioned, gives you some nice action. And you can open it three different ways. You've got the thumb studs there. So you can open it with your thumb, you've got the flipper that works really well. And it's something that has traditionally been kind of difficult to pull off with a crossbar lock and SOG did it very well. You can also do 
that simple wrist flick open or closed as well. There's a green G10, but again, the red G10 here, I think is a little bit more iconic, definitely eye catching. And then you've got a deep carry pocket clip as well. Some folks don't appreciate the big SOG lettering right there, but again, coming in at 55 bucks, really, really hard not to recommend this knife. And last, but certainly not least, remember we're going alphabetically here, Spyderco with their paramilitary two. And we actually kind of had fun here in the office arguing about which knife to, uh, to put in here for Spyderco's entry. Um, but that just goes to show you that uh, the spirited debate around their stuff is, is pretty fun and pretty, uh, pretty healthy overall. But this particular, this is just the base model of the Para 2 coming in about 155 right now. It kind of has everything that's made Spyderco successful over the years. You've got a blade shape and kind of edge geometry that was honed over years of making stuff like the Delica and the Endura. You've got S30V blade steel, US construction, full flat grind, easy opening with that ambidextrous thumb hole right there. Everything you want in kind of a classic Spyderco blade. You also got a four position pocket clip. You can carry it in any of those four positions as that name would suggest. And I think what that says about Spyderco that they'll, they'll do that so often on a lot of knives, whereas a lot of companies sometimes you're lucky if you even get one set of screw holes for your pocket clip is they've always been focused on the community and the enthusiast and really catering to everyone out there that they possibly could. So you've got options here, which is nice. And on top of that, you've got Spyderco's signature locking mechanism, the compression lock. You can kind of think of it like a frame lock from the spine of the knife rather than operated here from the front. Uh, but it's also got a little tab that sticks into the tang of the blade. So it's even more secure than a liner lock and gives you some really good one-handed action as well. Let's you keep your fingers out of the path of the blade, which I like. And actually, one thing I forgot about the blade, you've got that finger choil here, spanning the area around the pivot between the handle and the blade. Again, another signature Spyderco element that lets you choke up on the blade and get a little more handle length out of what you normally would be able to get otherwise. But really, this knife has absolutely everything you could want in a Spyderco even if I'd take the pair of three myself. But anyway, that's it. That is all for the list today. Let me know what you guys think for, uh, for the best from every brand out there. What would you change? Uh, what are some brands out here maybe we didn't cover? Let us know your favorites on those as well. In the meantime, if you wanna get your hands on any of these, we'll leave links in the description as always to take you over to knifecenter.com and make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there. Because if you're going to spend your money on one of these knives, might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.